All right, we're back here on the Coleman project. Made some progress in the last little while. Uh, we can see under there that there are no more chassis rails on the chassis all the way up to the center front section right there. And then the next chassis member up is our transmission cross member. So I had to do some chassis cross rail removals. The back one is off, the middle one is off. I didn't actually have to remove the back one, except that I cut the chassis shorter and it was in the way. So it had to come off for that reason. This chassis rail had to come off because this is part of the double chassis right here. And that's all riveted in between the cross member. And then the real big reason why this is so important, and try and get a better shot here, is that I've got some pretty heavy rust damage and rust bloom in this area here. Uh, it's actually pretty localized in this region. And like this section of the chassis, double chassis is fine. This section flares up. And then this section of the double chassis is fine. So what I've decided I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut out a part of the double chassis section. And I'm going to go ahead and remove that get all the rust out of there, get everything straightened up, get everything fixed, do any patches that I wanna do for thin material, and then I will go ahead and reinstall this, <clears throat> weld it back in, and then I can reassemble the chassis. Overall, the other side chassis rail is actually in phenomenal shape. There's no rust blooming at all. I think this truck was sitting at an angle well, there's two things, two things that this could have been. I, I don't actually know. Either the truck was resting at an angle and water was able to collect in here, or whatever bed they had on this truck previous to it just sitting out in a field allowed water or chemicals or something to run down this side of the chassis rail that allowed for this crevice corrosion going on here. Now, interestingly, the bloom is all localized to this area, so I'm suspicious it had something to do with this hole that allowed water to get in there. You can see that this whole region is actually ballooned out. If you, let's see if I can get a good view of that. You can see it starts bulging kind of about here. Let me see, can I get a better shot? Maybe. So it kind of starts bulging right in this area and then it balloons out pretty heavily and then it flares back in over there. And then the other location where I have some, some amount of blooming and crevice corrosion is right here under that cross member. So we have the two rear cross members out. Those needed to come out anyway because I'm relocating the axles and I want to redo the hanger brackets and all of that jazz. So uh, no harm in this as far as I'm concerned. And it allows me to set the rear axle exactly where I want it and put the cross members where they need to be. Now I have actually split one of these chassis before and I pulled the reinforcing rail out of the chassis and typically what there is is some spot welds in the chassis that are holding the inner chassis to the outer chassis, but they rely actually very heavily on the rivet joints to assemble everything together. So the spot welding is kind of here and there in the chassis rails. And what we'll do, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut the sh inner chassis. I'm not going to touch the outer chassis. I just want to nip off the inner chassis. I'm probably going to do that with a 45 degree cut in the inner chassis without touching the outer chassis. And if I have to use my Dremel tool and go really slow, that's fine. We're going to do that. I do have some 40 thou thick cutoff wheels for my angle grinder. So that should do a pretty large amount of the skin without a problem. And we'll finish up with the Dremel in the corners until we kind of get that inner chassis completely separated. So I'm back here, got my speed square, and it doesn't work quite as well as I actually wanted it to. Um, but nonetheless, we're gonna do that anyway. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snip it in an area where I don't cross any holes. So I'm thinking probably starting right about here miss this hole, zip up, and come across the top. Nothing else going on in this area. I really wanna make sure I get all of this ballooning. You can see that there's quite a lot that's going on there. Kind of the same as what's going on in that hole. So we'll go ahead and get that marked out and done. 
Okay, so we are back here and we've gone ahead and gotten this cut. I'm pretty freaking happy with how that went. Managed to get through the outer chassis, didn't touch the inner chassis, at least not by much. Not by anything to worry about. Um, I've got about an inch and a half at each end that I need to do with the Dremel tool. So we're going to get right onto that and see if we can get that to pop. And yeah, as soon as we're done with those cuts, we'll go ahead and start getting the wire brush out and start getting this uh, kind of prepped up so that we can find where all the spot welds are in it. All right, so been working away at this for a little bit now. And the flashlight's washing that out pretty badly. Yeah, we'll try and leave it like that. So I've got it zipped all the way around. I can flex the chassis, the interior section, and both the flanges. I think I might have just a tiny little bit of material left in the corners, but I don't want to start gouging it too deep because it's kind of hard to see what's going on in there. And once I get the release, rest of the frame rail released, it should just pop free without too much trouble. And if I have to come back in again and cut a little bit more, I will. But I'm happy with that. I'm going to move on. I got my wire wheels sitting right here. I'm going to get those set up on the angle grinder. And then we're going to go ahead and touch the surface in here and see if we can't find where the spot welds are hanging out. All right. So we are back here. Let's put the light like this. That pretty, pretty well lights it. Very good to see. So we've got all of the rust buffed off the interior of the chassis rail. And I've identified spot welds. There was one here. And there is a pair of them here, actually. There's one here, and there's one here. There might be one here, maybe. We're going to find out. But what I'm doing is I'm actually using my electric drill with a hole saw on it very carefully, very slowly, working my way through the inner chassis rail. And you can see here from the hole that what I've done is drilled through the inner rail. I'm just touching the steel on the outer rail. There's a very definite feel to it when it actually punches through the inner part of the chassis rail. So there's not really a lot of risk of drilling the outer rail. And even if I did a little bit, it's not gonna matter because when I replace this section, I'm going to weld it back in in the same region. We're gonna run through all of the areas on the interior of the chassis rail where we have these spot welds. I've identified uh, one, two, three, four, at least at the back. And then there's one here, so that's five. There's another one here, that's six. And then I was not able to see any more along the rest of the section. So I'm not sure whether or not I've just not identified them or what. I think that there might not be any there, but we definitely have a few to go ahead and cut out. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, at least more holes to drill. So we're going to go ahead and get that done and see what happens. I do expect the inner rail to kind of pop out once we get those drilled. Quite a lot of crevice corrosion and force on this bulge section here. So we'll see how it goes. All right, guys, some time has passed here. Been uh, fighting with the chassis since I went ahead and cut the chassis free. I've been working on it. Uh, if there's any questions, I buckled the back section of the chassis on purpose so that I could get crowbars in behind. Uh, what I didn't catch is that there was actually rust jacking on the top as well as on the bottom, and that was wedging the inner chassis into the rails in a way where I wasn't going to be able to get it out. So I've been uh, sitting here with my brand new Ingersoll Rand air hammer and chisel set. This thing is pretty sweet and I've been chiseling out all the rust, and I thought that would be quite an interesting thing to come take a look at. So if I actually, let me see if I can get a good position on the camera here. If I come in here and I shine the light down the side, you should be able to see the stratified layers in there. And what's really interesting is you can actually see where the rust came from because there's a separation line in the middle. Now, 
before we remove that jacked rust in there, it basically wedges the chassis rails together. Then I can't get it apart. So what I've done is in this section, and you can see it pretty clearly, I've hammered out all of the rust that's present. And I did that using the air hammer. So I figured that I would go ahead and give a quick demo of that. It's actually quite impressive. So I just run the air hammer on the side like this and I hit go. And it slowly works its way down. And occasionally it jams in there, but it's not bad. And just that one pass did a lot and I'll do another pass and knock all that rust out of there. And it'll end up, I think, Let's see if I can get a better angle on the light here. Yeah, there we go. I think it'll end up being much better. And as soon as that's free, I should be able to pop the inner rail out without too much trouble. So we'll carry on with this, getting all this knocked out of there. And then we'll come back in a few and take a look at the results. All right. So I just managed to get all of the rust knocked out of the bottom. And I came back in and just did a little test jump of this and the whole chassis popped right out of there without a problem. I think that I'm now in good shape to be able to get this thing removed without too much more grief. Uh, I may be hung on a couple of spots. I got to check, see if I have any more spot welds. But in general, you can see that, yeah, the whole chassis is just going to slip right out of there now that I got all that bloody rust out of there. So that's really good. I honestly wish I'd have caught that. Before I buckled the chassis rail at the back, I'll have to straighten this up a little bit, but for the most part, pretty happy with how that's come out. And this is just going to hop right on out of there at this point. So we'll see. Yeah, I've probably got a little bit still holding it. Uh, let me move these clamps a little. Get this thing out of my way. And maybe we can just slip that right on out of there. And there it is, inner chassis rail removed. You can clearly see all of the rust damage is occurring in areas where water was getting in. So we'll go ahead and get all this rust chipped out of there. Uh, and I'm probably gonna at least make a patch in this area where I've got a big gaping hole. And maybe over here as well, it looks pretty thin. I've got some, 1 8 plate that I can use to, to make up that patch and go from there. Should be a pretty straightforward repair. Got a little bit of straightening to do on the flanges to pull them back into shape. This sprung back as soon as all the rust was knocked out of it, so that's really good. Uh, this one's deformed slightly, mostly because this is the thinner section and I think it yielded. So I'll get this all straightened up and fixed up, but really happy with how that's worked out. Now it's just a matter of chipping all that rust off there. Helper appeared here. Hello. All right. From one of got the his earmuffs right. and his safety glasses on, and he's helping with the needle scaling, right, buddy? I was the one in the little truck in the budget. Yeah. Oh. The tires. Okay. So go ahead and do the corner here. You can see that there's rust there. You see that? That's all rust. We got to get that off. Yeah, just like that. More. Do more in that area. Get all the rust off so we can paint it. Yeah, that's stud. That's I good. Okay. Ching. Keep going, buddy. All that rust has to come off of it. Alright, that's probably not strong enough to get the worst of it out of the corner. Stop for a second. And we're gonna change tools, okay? Huh? We're gonna change tools. Give me the other one. Oh, this? 
What if I do this that? This is uh, an air hammer, it's called. So is it like for like... Okay, so watch. What we're going to do is we're going to take it, going to rotate it just a little bit. Oh, I broke it. Huh, imagine that. And we're going to do this. This one's much more powerful. Do you want to try? No. No? Okay, do you want to watch? Move back and hold the flashlight for me. Can you do that? And here, you be the cameraman. What? I look too. Well, you got to find your earmuffs and your safety glasses, Julie. Earmuffs and safety glasses, okay? Go get your earmuffs and your safety glasses. You got to find both. And then you can come take a look at what we're doing, okay? okay. Well, we believe in safety first, right, Julie? Helper number two is on the way. Helper two has arrived. This is the big okay. bro, is it here? Or you're using the little girl instead. Alright. Why don't you give it a try, princess? Give it a try. On the bus. Yep. Just like that. All right, so it's been a while since I did an update here, made a lot of progress. I haven't posted because this part has taken way longer than I had originally anticipated it would. And that was a combination of the fact that it took a long time to strip all the rust and paint off the chassis with wire wheels, sanding wheels, and uh, drill wheels, and it's just a lot of wire wheeling. It was very boring, awful work dirty filthy and it was been the height of the Houston summer for gosh past three months here or finally in September things are cooling off you can work outside uh, it's a lot better now so anyway with that being said we have progressed to the point where the chassis itself is all prepped I've also laid in some primer uh, I've got the chassis upside down right now I've laid some primer on the double chassis rail section and I've got the inner rail here pulled out and I've already snipped out the worst offending piece of the corrosion that we had. You can see that it actually rusted right through in this region. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make a patch out of this plate. I've already got it all marked out. So we'll zip over to the bandsaw and we'll snip that off. And then what we're gonna do is we might have to adjust the size a little bit so it just drops in here. I've got some lovely little welding clamps. We'll set that in nice and flush. I've got this clamped to the chassis rail. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll lay a weld on the backside first. And then we'll flip it over. We'll back grind it a little bit if we need to. And then we'll lay a weld in from the other side with my TIG welder is the plan. So we'll go ahead and get that done. Okay, we've got ourselves all set up. Our patch is all made and clamped in with our little sheet metal clamps. And we're just going to go ahead and weld that in. We're going to start at the center, work our way out uh, evenly on both sides. And hopefully by the time we close out the end, we are minimizing our distortion. Because that's going to let some of this shrink. I don't know if that's the right call or not, but that's what we're going to do. And then we'll flip it over, weld the other side. And then uh, slap down a coat of primer, clamp it in there, and weld it in. 
I've got the blanket set up so that my welding zone is covered uh, mostly because just like this mostly because I'm residential here and people could walk by and I don't want them to get flashed so should be all set we'll go ahead and get that done well, it looks like it turned out pretty good welding came out okay I'm not perfect but it's okay I'm happy with that penetration is not the greatest so what we're gonna do is touch this all up with the sanding wheel and then we'll run over it with this side uh, as well and that should give me a good strong patch all right making some really good progress here we've got our patched and straightened chassis rail reinstalled we're going to go ahead and tack this section in four places and then we're probably going to weld this out and weld that out because all of this right now is in the right place through here i'm really happy with that we'll go ahead and get that squared away and then what we'll do is we'll move all our clamps over to here pull all of this up and then weld that out as well there are a total of uh one full weld line over here and then i have one two three four five six spot welds to go ahead and make and yeah once we're done with that uh basically this part is done we'll do a little bit of tweaking and straightening and 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 kind of cosmetics of the final bottom rail things things warped a little bit but we'll get that figure sorted out but overall i'm really happy well there we are we're done not too terribly bad pretty happy with how that turned out some good heavy welds in there spot welds worked out really well especially considering I was working uphill for most of it patch looks good overall I'm I'm super pleased all the spot welds are in place I have a very, very small amount of weld repairs to do here on the chassis. Somebody flame cut some stuff off and nicked the chassis rail. So one, two, three little spots, gonna lay down some weld. And then we're gonna go ahead and clean everything off and paint, it's gonna be awesome. All right, so we're back here on the truck. I've got all of the weld repairs that I wanted to do done here, here, and here. They're not perfect cosmetically but they're more than good enough for what we're going to be doing. Now the problem that I ran into is that once I had welded all of the chassis in place, it ended up being that the chassis had a pretty hefty curl to it. And so what I've done is I've gone through and I've made a couple of adjustments by heating the chassis rail so it pulls tight in a couple of places. 
Uh, that's here, here, and over here. Now, why did the chassis wonk in these regions? Well, this is the areas where you can see that I welded the internal chassis together. And there's actually a little bit of a wonk right here at this junction as well. So I'm about to go through and do the same thing. And what that's done is it's pulled the chassis back where it needs to be. The chassis doesn't have a curl all the way through. It had a couple of local expansions in it. So we're going to pull that board out there and then take the chain off so you can see kind of where it's at now. For reference, let's move this out of the way. For reference, this side is actually really nice and straight. No problem there. This side had a bit of a wonk to it. Let's go ahead and uh, just pop the chain off for a second. And we'll pull out the board real quick. Which came out pretty easily, actually. That's good. Well, nothing wrong with using a 10-pound sledge there, Jack. Okay, now if we run down and we look down this line, we can actually see that from about here up is actually pretty straight and there corresponds with this region right here where we've got the twisting so I think that what I'm gonna do yeah is we'll go ahead and we'll run one more heating cycle here and here top and bottom and the reason that we're having such a grievous issue there is that this is where I weld the chassis back in to the double chassis rail and what that's done is it's pulled this in a little bit and twisted the chassis outward so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the torch through here one bead at the top one bead at the bottom and we put the board in this location and then we put tension on it so that the chassis can't expand so what happens when we do this and I'll take a video of this actually this will be quite interesting um, now that I've got a process that's working the metal will expand and because it's soft we're going to go to basically a red hot in this location because it's soft it expands a little bit and what it tries to do is it tries to push this end of the chassis rail back out but we're going to have a chain around there preventing that and so when it heats up it will expand but it'll just get thicker and then when it cools down it'll pull the whole chassis back in and straighten it out it works pretty well uh, I already did two test runs on the other sections I'm, I'm happy with the results that I'm getting there so we're gonna go ahead and do one more here and then I think we're gonna call it good and get the primer on and let me get the camera set up on the tripod so you guys can come along and see We're going to get a nice hot flame here. And then we're just going to basically draw a line across the chassis rail. We're going to do this on the top and the bottom. We're going to start on the top. And we're just looking to put the heat in on a line so that we can get some reduction in length. Doesn't take much, it's not actually out by a lot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna warm this up and hopefully the camera is gonna be able to pick up the color shift here. And I want everybody to notice that this side of the chassis rail is actually quite straight at the moment. And the reason that this works is that we actually are gonna increase the thickness of the chassis locally. Not by a huge amount, but by a little bit. As the metal heats up, it has to expand and it has to go somewhere. And that's typically manifested by a local increase in size and thickness as the temperature comes up. not a very large increase but it is an increase and you can actually see it visibly over on this side the chassis is growing outwards a little bit as well as growing in thickness 
So that's why this works so well. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip and do the bottom now, and then uh, we'll let it cool and bring you back. All right, well, I think that's as good as I'm gonna be able to get it. It's still got like a slight little wave to it. I'm not worried about that because we're gonna put intermediate cross members in and I'll be able to pull things around as I install those. So overall, I think I'm pretty happy. It's no longer a wild banana. It's not perfect, but it's gonna be more than good enough for what we're doing. And I think we're gonna live with that. So we're gonna go ahead, blow off all the dust off the chassis. We're gonna hit it with paint thinners, get all of the crap off it. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, paint it. We're gonna be good. Well, there we have it. It's officially painted, primered anyway. We'll go ahead and get the satin black top coat on it probably tomorrow. And this stage of the project is gonna officially be done. Super duper duper happy about that. That has, yeah, that's been awful. Uh, all of it done to in the hottest parts of summer. It's only just getting comfortable now So yeah, really pleased with this. It's gonna be phenomenal I'm Really happy about that Yeah, so um, before I put everything away uh, figured I'd talk about this for a second I upgraded my paint gun to a 3m PPS system uh, When I went and did the tractor restoration, uh, the Alice Tremors D12. It's up on my channel in the other videos and I upgraded to this gun because I needed something that could spray the extremely thick industrial urethanes and uh, this was a good choice because it had variable tip geometry. You can just replace the, the front tip with something else. And I'm not gonna lie, it has worked phenomenally well. I've been so happy with this gun. It's super easy to clean. When the tips get too dirty, you toss them, you put a new one on. It's it's a everybody says, well, you know, that's an expensive system for an amateur. And my response to that would be, I'm an amateur and I find it to be the most phenomenal system I've ever touched. Because I don't have to clean anywhere near as much. And I think it was like three or four hundred bucks for the first kit and another maybe hundred bucks for this humongous tub of cups and um, paint cans and that comes with that comes with one of these measuring cups which I'll clean up here and it'll be as good as new and it comes with I think a hundred inserts is it a hundred no it comes with comes with 50 inserts and 50 lids and it's it's so good I don't think I've ever come across anything quite as awesome as this. I don't have to fuss with cleaning it. None of the paint can get in the important parts of the gun. I basically just set it and go. It works beautifully. I get a really nice finish for everything that I ever want to do. And I can get professional results if I take my time and do a good bit of prep work. And I can't, I can't think of a better, better paint system than this for, for a hobbyist. Uh, and if you are a hobbyist, the, the reality is is that this is probably one of the better investments that you can make if you're going to be painting stuff. 
in order to be able to do a decent job and not have to fuss around with the paint gun not working because it wasn't cleaned quite perfectly the last time you used it. It's, it's a phenomenal piece of kit. I can't speak highly enough of this paint gun. Alright, there it sits in all of its glory. We're finally complete with the chassis. All of the weld repairs are complete. The chassis is entirely painted. This has been a really huge part of the project to go through and get that all cleaned up, primered and painted, but it is now done. Next step in the process is going to be to do the spring packs and spring hangers. So I've got those uh, sitting here on the bench, ready to break down. Also managed to bring down the 337 flathead that we're going to be using on this project from uh, my brother. This actually came out of Seattle. We hauled it from Seattle to Oklahoma City, my brother's place there, on a road trip where we convoyed together. I drove one of his trucks and he drove his other truck fully loaded, and this came with us. So. You know, my payment for having driven a truck with no air conditioning at the heat of summer was to have this engine hauled. And then he brought it to my dad's place a couple weekends ago when we went up there to visit, and I brought it back down with me. Uh, I've also got my five-speed Clark transmission original to the truck. I'm not sure if this one's got overdrive or not. I'm going to have to check it. But that is also here so that we can properly get the engine mounted, cross member set, all of that jazz. In addition to that, I have also managed to acquire over on this side of my shop, a NV4500 out of, I believe it's a 97 Chevy three quarter or one ton truck. So I've got one of the best five speed with overdrive manual transmissions you can get a hold of. Uh, the way I figure it with my wheels, I'll be able to do about 65 without too much grief within the operable engine RPM speed. So that'll make the truck a little bit more utilitarian and it'll allow me to drive it. This transmission has synchromesh, the original transmission does not. 